Hello and welcome to Lore of the Cards, the series that looks to unravel the lore hidden in your Hearthstone deck. In our last in-depth episode, we looked at Sarad and the unpredictable Ethereals, and ended with a vote between Anubarak, Ronin and the Murloc Knight. This one was another really fierce contest, but the tiny Murloc emerged victorious against these two legendary heroes. Maybe he waited until they tired themselves out and swooped in for the victory. Like Sarad, the Murloc Knight himself has very little lore, so we will mainly be focusing on the stories of his race and a few notable Murlocs, linking all the Murloc Hearthstone cards into one episode. The art of the card is by Sam Nielsen. He currently resides in Utah and has been working in the video game industry since he was 16. Nielsen currently works at Avalanche Software, which is a subsidiary of Disney Interactive as a concept artist. Most recently, putting his skills into the Disney Infinity franchise. Working on this project, he's produced stylized images of some of the world's best known characters. Thor, Iron Man, Tinkerbell and Jasmine to name a few. This style is only one of the feathers in Nielsen's cap, and we only need look at the work he's produced for Hearthstone to see this. His two dragon whelps reflect a more serious style, and the sapling and murloc knight actually seem to combine the styles a little. Murlocs have been in the Warcraft franchise since Warcraft 3's first prologue mission, and have been growing in popularity ever since, making their way into much of Blizzard's merchandise. Plushies, figures, a stein, solar-powered bobbleheads, mugs, and even a backpack. Murlocs have also been the subject of a song by Blizzard Entertainment's in-house band, Elite Tauren Chieftain, I Am Murloc. While Murlocs are native to Azeroth, there is much of their history and purpose that can only be theorised, but many of these theories have been formulated by Bran Bronzebeard, arguably Azeroth's greatest explorer. One of Bran's theories is that Murlocs are the descendants of an as of yet unknown frog ancient. Azeroth used to be a place of chaos until the world was reshaped and ordered by giants called the Titans. Many of the Ancients were creatures that came into being from the dawn of Azeroth's reshaping, and as a result are connected to the world's essence in a way that very few could be. Ancients that have currently been represented in Hearthstone are Malorn, Cenarius, son of Malorn, and most recently, Aviana. Murlocs evolved from a race known as the Gorlocks, that can still be found on Azeroth in the Northrend continent. These squat amphibians are likely physically closer than the Murlocs to their frog ancient ancestor. Unlike Murlocs that possess the ability to walk and run, Gorlocs hop while on land. Gorlocs will tend to use their rows of razor sharp teeth as a weapon, rather than crafting their own, and behind these teeth sits a bulbous bloated tongue. Generally speaking, Gorlocs are primal and savage, often attacking on sight. There are a few tribes of Gorlock, however, that are an exception to this role. These call themselves the Oracles, and they reside in the region of Sholzar Basin. There are several pieces of Titan technology that can be found in the Basin, and with exposure to this technology, the Oracles gain self-awareness and intelligence. Their small society, led by High Oracle Suse, possesses an understanding of shamanism, and it is the Oracle's shaman that are looked up to as leaders of their people with those better suited to fighting sticking to more menial tasks. The oracles revere the rare albino tick bird, seeing the creature as a sign of good fortune, leading to bountiful rains and good grub harvests. The items held in highest reverence by the oracles are the titan creations that gave them their intellect, and they are able to use the crystals found within the basin to control the weather. The oracles see themselves as the guardians of these powers. Their determination to ensure that these powers do not fall into the hands of those that would misuse them has seen them come to blows with the Frenzy Heart tribe, a tribe of bipedal wolverine-like creatures, the Wolvar. Not much is known about the traditions and customs of Murlocs, as they have only recently started to come into contact with the land dwellers of Azeroth, but it is suspected that their race is ancient, being thousands or tens of thousands of years old. A Murloc's body is perfectly evolved for life in harsh underwater environments. They are powerful swimmers and able to forge their own weaponry. Their society is split into many different tribes, all with varying customs and scale colours. Murloc history and tradition is passed down the generations by word of mouth. 
This is another reason we know little about them. Their language, Nurglish, is made up of odd guttural sounds that other races struggle to make out. All except the Makrura, crustacean humanoids that share the same language. Very few Murlocs are able to speak the common language, but it is possible. Maybe with enough diligent study and observation, scholars may learn this language. But due to the Murlocs' aggressive nature, this is next to impossible. The fish-like creatures relentlessly attack anyone that steps into their territory. Since their arrival on land, Murlocs have taken up residence on many shores on Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms, a testament to their adaptability and tenacity, constructing crude settlements. Some Murlocs have ventured inland and adapted to life near freshwater. Perhaps this ability to adapt so quickly would explain the difference in appearance between Murlocs that live on the shores and those that can be found deep in the ocean. Deep Sea Murlocs, who we first encountered in the Cataclysm expansion in WoW's only underwater zone, Vashir, have many characteristics similar to anglerfish. It is this type of Murloc that the Cold Light Oracle and Seer depict in Hearthstone, and these cards get their namesake from a deep ravine found within Vashir, where many of these Murlocs reside. After the Cataclysm Beta, the ravine's name changed, but the Murlocs kept their name. Like their land-dwelling relatives, Deep Sea Murlocs are very powerful swimmers, but where they differ is in their anglerfish qualities. Deep Sea Murlocs possess longer fangs, possibly for gripping slippery underwater prey. They appear to be blind, having no pupils, due to not needing sight in the darkness of the depths, and also have a luminous growth attached to their forehead. Like anglerfish, it is likely this growth has adapted to attract prey. It has been a point of contention among scholars as to whether Murlocs are intelligent beings or primitive ones. At first glance, one would believe the latter. Murlocs possess little in the way of any technology in their tribal settlements, and their garbled language shows little refinement. Through ongoing study, scholars are now believing that Murlocs do in fact possess a fair amount of intelligence, and there are several reasons for this, such as their knowledge for building crude settlements and use of weapons and tools. Some go as far as saying, as Murlocs are in fact just as intelligent as the Alliance and Horde races, but intentionally hide their intelligence to keep their society's most guarded secrets hidden. In combat, Murlocs play to their strengths. Some of what I will say here is from the non-canonical Warcraft RPG, but there is evidence in World of Warcraft and Hearthstone that backs up the description from the RPG. Since Murlocs individually are relatively minute humanoids, they will often attack in packs, swarming their opponent, claiming victory through sheer numbers. This is what we see in Hearthstone. Lots of individually weak cards come together to form a stronger force. Wow hints at this too, as heroes that raid Murloc camps with wistful abandon will often find themselves overrun. These swarms are not a mindless rabble. They will focus down necessary targets, hinting towards intelligent use of tactical thinking. Unlike many of the Alliance and Horde races, who will never back down from a fight, Murlocs will often retreat if a battle seems hopeless. They will in fact use calculated retreats in their battle tactics. When met with powerful, arrogant foes, Murlocs look to retreat to the waters. The Murlocs' pursuers, upon reaching the water, will often find themselves ambushed by a host of Murlocs hiding beneath. Not only does this give the Murlocs the advantage of a surprise attack, but it also puts them in an environment which they find easier to fight in. While a Murloc is a proficient combatant on land, their bodies are not best suited for land combat, as their walk is clumsy and run laboured. In the water, it is a totally different story. The Murlocs are agile and aggressive, nipping at their enemies like a swarm of piranha. Even those with a rock-solid defence will eventually see this broken, through either loss of breath or blood. It seems Murlocs begin mastering their combat tactics from an early age. Murloc Young are depicted in art as warriors, and the heroes of the Storm Champion, Murky, is able to summon a large group of baby Murloc to pummel his opponents. Murlocs were thought only to be able to perform basic magical spells, but upon closer inspection, many shaman among the tribes are able to cast potent water and earth spells, suggesting a deeper knowledge of magic. For example, Murloc tide callers that can be found near Everstill Lake in the Red Ridge Mountains are capable of firing frost bolts. While the Murloc tribes on Azeroth seem broken and segmented, it is suspected that their mass exodus to the shores was coordinated. 
As I stated earlier, some Murloc tribes have moved inland, and it is suspected that this too has been an effort for their race to encroach further on others' territories. The reason for this steady move in land is only known by the Murlocs, but there are several potential possibilities. The Murlocs may be doing it for themselves, desiring to claim territory on both the land and in the water. The Murlocs' move to the land closely coincides with the re-emergence of the Naga, mutated night elves that seek to dominate. The Murlocs possibly fled the oceans to escape the Naga, but some believe they may also be working together. Murlocs have often been used as slaves by the Naga, either as a workforce as we see in WoW and in Warcraft 3, or as cannon fodder warriors. The Murlocs used by the Naga in Warcraft 3 are in fact a variety called Murgle. The Warcraft RPG states these Murlocs are mutated by the dark powers of the Burning Legion, a force that looks to destroy order. While this may not be true, the Murgle certainly look different than Murlocs as we think of them. When travelling, they only appear to be able to walk on all fours. This could just be their representation in Warcraft 3, as standard Murlocs also walked on all fours in this game. Murgle have armoured scales and large spines that protrude from their back. They are also more violent and vicious than other Murlocs. The Murloc tribe's migration to the surface could also be religiously motivated. What Murlocs view as deities and the customs associated to them will vary from tribe to tribe. For example, the Rockpool tribe found in the Blasted Lands worship Neptulon as a god. In Warcraft 3, we see an instance of a Murloc tribe worshipping a Naga Sea Witch. This tribe, which used to be docile, began attacking the trolls of the Darkspear Islands to sacrifice them to the Sea Witch. If not for the arrival of the Orcs, the Darkspear would have been wiped out. Thrall and his men liberated the trolls, but were too late to stop their chieftain, the powerful witch doctor Senjin, from being sacrificed. With Vol'jin as their new chieftain, the Darkspear joined the Horde. These Murlocs played a vital role in establishing the Horde as we know it today. According to the RPG, Murloc religion is constantly shifting, more often than not polytheistic. Their gods can range from powerful entities like Neptulon to something as simple as a whale. On some occasions, one of their deities will fall to a predator, and on these occasions, the Murlocs will then begin to revere the predator. Some tribes worship the Deep Mother, a personification of the ocean. The Murlocs' ability to easily accept new leaders can be seen in the case of King Murgle Murgle. The King is a night elf druid dressed in a Murloc costume. The Night Elf was sent to observe and study the Winterfin tribe in Northrend, almost foolishly hoping his crude disguise would fool the Murlocs. Upon arrival, the Night Elf found the Murlocs victim to a disaster. He aided them, and as a result, the Winterfin tribe accepted him as their king. Murgle Murgle now aids others speak to the Winterfin tribe, who value clams as currency and need heroes to rid them of the Macrura Claximus, who abducted several Murloc children. Scholars believe that there is a possibility that the Murlocs' arrival on land could be heralding the arrival of a commonly held deity, one that may be undiscovered by the mortals of Azeroth. Perhaps just a giant sea creature, perhaps something more sinister, maybe even the arrival of one of the horrifying old gods, creatures that flourished in the chaos before the Titans ordered Azeroth. Either way, it is an unknown quantity, and the possibilities are disturbing. Further evidence of this theory is backed up by the relatively recent occurrence of a mutant strain of Murloc. Many agree these mutations are caused by the stirring of a sinister beast in the ocean's depths. These mutant Murloc show clear signs of corruption, even turning on their own kind. During the Lich King's invasion of the Eastern Kingdoms, where he turned many into his undead slaves, it would appear that Murlocs were in fact resistant to his control in undeath. At least this is what the apothecary Renzithem found. This didn't stop the Lich King enslaving the Chilmere tribe during the Wrath of the Lich King expansion and turning them into mindless Murgles. I've mentioned the Rockpool tribe already, but let's just take a quick look at a few other Murloc tribes and characters we know through Hearthstone. The Bluegill tribe can be found in the Wetlands region and are a thorn in the side of the Alliance's Menethil Harbour attacking fishermen and stealing ship cargo. These Murloc appear to be led by Gobbler. Gobbler's Warcraft trading card game art is actually used to represent a different tribe in Hearthstone, the Grimscale. 
These Murlocs can be found in the Blood Elven territory of Eversong Woods, led by their shamanistic chieftain, Those curious as to how to spell that, it's M-M-M-R-R-R-G-G-G-L-L-L. Is capable of healing himself and allies, and casting the spell Chain Lightning. The legendary Old Murkai leads a group of Murlocs on the coast of Westfall in the Eastern Kingdoms. He is larger and more fearsome than the other surrounding Murlocs, so it is assumed he is the chieftain. Murkai even has his own plushie. The Murloc Raider and Scout also belong to Murkai's tribe, being depicted in the same art piece by Dan Scott. The Silphin tribe are located on Azure Mist Isle, and don't have friendly relations with the Furbolg that live there. The Furbolg enlisted the help of Draenei adventurers to deal with the Silphin. The Tidehunter, Puddle Stomper and War Leader are all Hearthstone creations. The War Leader further reinforces the fact that Murloc attacks are organised. Murloc Knight was also added specifically for Hearthstone, though it does give possible lore insight. Previously, we have never seen Murlocs mounted, and whether frog mounts become canon is yet to be seen. The Murloc Knight also wears plate armour, that suggests that Murlocs may in fact have a very good understanding of the art of crafting it. There have also been a couple of Murloc dungeon bosses in WoW. Gelehast was a Murloc who heard the calls of the Old Gods, summoning him to the sunken Night Elf Temple, Black Fathom Deeps. Gelahast and his followers cut a path through the old god worshippers that had already taken up residence in the ruin and claimed his own territory. Impressed with Galahast's strength, the cult allowed him to stay, and the Murloc set up his own sacrificial altar for the sinister forces that lingered in the ruins. Galahast's rule over his territory came to an end, when the cultists decided to cleanse the ruins of anything not under their control in the Warlords of Draenor expansion. The faceless one, Coral, was sent in, crushed Galahast, and subjugated his followers. Coral now leaves Galahast's twisted corpse on his sacrificial altar. The Murloc Cookie has been in a classic version of a dungeon and its remake. You can also catch an awesome legendary concept for his card on Fuller's Games channel. Cookie served as ship's chef under Captain Greenskin, who had been hired by the Defias Brotherhood's leader, Edwin Van Cleef. The Brotherhood once rebuilt the Alliance capital of Stormwind, but sought to destroy the city after being offered an insulting amount for their hard work. Greenskin was slain, and Cookie sought to defend Van Cleef, but was defeated. Van Cleef was then killed and beheaded by adventurers. It would later turn out that Cookie survived his encounter with the heroes and took over as captain of his ship. Cookie still maintained his role as chef as well, with any questioning his leadership oddly being taken ill very soon after doing so. Cookie would again serve the Defias when it was reformed by Edwin's daughter, Vanessa. He looks to battle heroes in much the same way he deals with mutinous crew members, shoving rotten food down their throats. Since we're here, let's do a very quick Lore of the Storm on Murky, one of the Heroes of the Storm characters. Murky first entered the Warcraft universe as a gift given out to attendees of the 2005 BlizzCon, a little Murloc pet that would follow your hero around in World of Warcraft. Since then, several different Murkies have been awarded to BlizzCon attendees and virtual ticket holders. Murk Abelo in 2011, Merkalot in 2013, and Merkadin will be given out this year. And Merkimus was given out as an arena tournament award. Other pets have been given out with names and appearances similar to Murky. Gurky, Lurky, Grunty, and Deathy as examples. There are more. Murky's lore has been fleshed out a little for Heroes of the Storm. The young Murloc that for some reason now wears a nappy, the British word for diaper, is angry at those that have taken advantage of his people. Several Murloc body parts, such as their scales, can be used to craft armour amongst other things. Murky now seeks vengeance on those that have wronged his people, and takes advantage of a power that only he seems to possess. Murky is able to vomit out an egg that allows him to quickly revive after death. While his body may be weak, he is able to wear down his opponents through sheer determination, smacking them to death with his trusty fish, vomiting exploding puffer fish, summoning tentacles and murlocs, and... Oh, that's why he wears a nappy. It isn't working very well. 
Finally, I want to touch on a Murloc subrace discovered on Pandaria that could very well fill their own episode of Lore of the Cards. The Jinyu are Murlocs that resided near the Enchanted Waters in the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. As a result, their intellect greatly increased, and they grew in size to equal that of the larger humanoid races. Some Jinyu elders are able to speak with the waters of Pandaria, making them very wise, powerful, and sometimes have the ability to predict future events. So, there you have it, the lore behind the Murlocs. The race itself, their culture, sub-races, and even a few standout individuals. If you've enjoyed this in-depth lore, please like, subscribe, and share this video around. It really does help the channel spread the awesomeness that is Warcraft lore. If you've enjoyed the art, all the artists I can find are credited in the description below. If you want a murky cue all over this video, then by all means hit the dislike button. If you want to know more about the Heroes of the Storm characters, I recently produced an episode on the monk Karazim, and it would be awesome if you guys could help bring my love for lore to the HOTS community as well. Chard, the sexiest and most charismatic member of Six Gamers, who edits these scripts, has also started streaming, covering Hearthstone, Heroes and other games. I occasionally pop along, so if you'd like to follow us on Twitch, you can find the link in the description below. I've been pondering what to do for the next episode, so I have a bit of a different vote for you. Would you like me to do several episodes covering all the dragon aspects, that's Ysera, Alexstrasza, etc? Do an episode on Ronin and Anubarak, since they were still pretty damn popular in the votes, or a completely different TGT card? There's a poll in the description below, and any suggestions are always welcomed in the comment section. Till next time guys. Happy Hearthstoning, and I'll see you for more Lore of the Cards.